Okay. Okay. So, um, it's very, it's, the Trinity is actually a very good place to start from. I can't hear you. Reno. Can you hear me? I can't. Yes, now I can hear you. Okay, good, good. Okay, okay. So we have 40 okay. minutes, right? Yes, okay. So let's, let's just go directly into it. Yeah. Into, okay. All right, welcome back. As you, um, this is part two. I'm Daddy Freeze and I've got Reno Omokri. And we're talking about is Jesus God? Mm -hmm. If you watch the part one of this series, you would see that we ended with the Trinity, where Reno was trying to explain how the Trinitarians got many things wrong. So let's go back to the Trinity. Uh, and in continuation of what you were saying. Okay, well, so what I was, I was trying to, because um, you asked me a question about the Trinity. The Trinity did not exist for the first 325 years of uh, Christianity. And when Christianity, when um, the, the religion that Christ uh, um, founded, when it left Israel, it left Israel as Christianity or Christ following or the way or the sect of the Nazarenes. These were different. Mm. It, it, that, this uh, uh, faith was not always called Christianity. It was called the sect of the Nazarenes. It was called the way. It was called um, a Christ fellowship. And then eventually it, you know, it, it settled on um, and, uh, in, a, in a place called Antioch as Christianity. So, but when he got to Rome, it changed and then became Christendom. Christendom is political Christianity. Christendom is political mm. Christianity. Now you have to understand that there were various factions. There were various factions in Christendom. There were actually various factions in Christendom. Now, Constantinople, when he rose to power, Constantinople the first, when he rose to power, now um, he wasn't a Christian. He was a pagan. He, he was actually a pagan. He was not a Christian. Now, the whole idea was that um, whoever would um, control religion, you know, would have a lot of influence in um, the Roman world. And he did not want anybody to have that control. You know, so eventually um, uh, he said, okay, that he'd had um, a dream, he'd had a revelation, and that he had become a Christian. This was, he was a novice. He had not even he, he studied anything, he was just a novice. And then there was a, a gentleman called Arius, Arius, who was in the Eastern Orthodox Church, Arius. And then so Arius was competing with him. And then Arius came up with his own doctrine, his own doctrine, which they in the Roman world, they called it a heresy because it was going to threaten their political power. So you, in the beginning, the part one of this um, uh, debate, you said that, um, that uh, in the Nicaea debate, no, the, Nicaea was not a debate. In Nicaea was actually- Was a council. Uh, yeah, it, and the word council is just, uh, is also not, not so accurate, but let's go with the word council. Nicaea was actually called by Constantinople. Constantinople called the Nicaean council and he led it. You mean Constantine of Constantino, uh, Sorry, Constantinople? Sorry, Constant, Const, Constantine. Constantine yes, of Constantinople. Yeah. So uh, uh, Emperor Constantine uh, the first yes. called the council of uh, Nicaea, you know, and he led it. He actually get, uh, led the opening prayer. He actually led the opening prayer. Now, what you have to understand, and please do not take my word for it. I don't like it when people take my word because that's how error creeps into, into religion, into faith. You know, if you read Acts 17, 11, that verse says that, and they of Berea were more, Berea. Were more noble than those of Thessalonica in that they heard the word, listened to it, believed it, and then they went home to search the scriptures to the see. The scriptures daily. So, so don't just, don't, don't take my word. Go and research what I'm saying. Constantine was in uh, rivalry with Arius. So Arius had brought his own doctrine. So he called his own council. And then it, 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 they call it the Council of Nicaea. Nicaea is in modern day Turkey, a country that I've visited multiple times, you know. And I don't just go to Istanbul, I go to, if I go to villages, you know. Um, I, I'm sure you probably see some of the videos. I've gone to Laodicea, I've gone to Ephesus, I've gone to, the, uh, Nicaea is no longer called Nicaea, it's now called Inche. Inche is in, it's in Turkey. So that these are places that I go there, I go and I mean study, I research, you know. What happened is that when he called the council, as at the time he called the council, he had not even been baptized. He was not even baptized. 
you know, he was a novice. And then, the, so they called this council. And then this council, what they said was that, okay, they are going to come up with a doctrine to rival Arius's doctrine, or what they call the Arian, they call it the Arian heresy. And so their own doctrine that they came out with was that now there's going to be a trinity. There's going to be God, uh, um, it's going to be three persons in one. Before 325, there was nothing like that. It's not in scripture. It is not in the early church. This is a Roman thing that came up by the emperor of Rome, they brought together a council. Excuse me. Now, there's a word that people use, God the Son. That word, mm. God the Son, does not exist in scripture. You will Doesn't. not see anywhere in scripture. God the Son. What you find in scripture is Son of God. Son of God. Now, so they had the Council of Nicaea, which is now called Inchia in 325 AD, and they came up with the Trinity. They came up with the Trinity. Nobody was going to dare the, uh, the Emperor Constantine the First. You know, he was he was the um, the leader of that council. But after he died, then they had another council in the place because they called it the, the Council of Chalcedron. Chalcedron is um, uh, um, C H A L C E D R O N. And then at, that, the, at, at that council, they said, okay, now. They want to promote. I'm not making this up. It sounds like I'm making it up, but you will not believe this. this day, <laughs> Some of us know, beings, Reno. <laughs> human beings. You know, you're not making it up. Human beings, they said they want to promote the man that they call Jesus, whose name, real name is Yeshua, that they want to promote him. From that day on, for, this, is, this, this is 451 AD. From 451 AD, he is now no longer to be known as the Son of God, that they are promoting him to God the Son. So that's how God the Son came into Christendom. It did not exist. Yeshua himself never said that he is God the Son. He never said so. Yeshua himself never said that he is God. He never said so. The Trinitarian doctrine is not based on scripture. It's based on man-made ideas. Like I said before in the part one, which I'll repeat again for people who will only watch the part, uh, part two, you know, um, the Trinity, if you go to the Catholic Church official uh, website, go there yourself. You know, go to the Catholic Church official website, go to the Church of England's official website. The Church of England broke away from the Catholic Church after the Pope would not allow the King, King Henry VIII marry Anne Boleyn, divorce his wife and marry his mistress. And then you also have Methodist Baptist, you go there, then you'll go to the World Council of Evangelical Churches, which um, a lot of Pentecostal churches uh, um, they subscribe to. The official Trinity doctrine is that three gods in one, co-equal, co-omniscient, co-substantial, and I've told you before, in the, uh, but which I'm going to repeat now, is that he, with the words himself that Yeshua told us contradicts with what these people have said. He, like I told you, in John 14, 28, he said, my father is greater than I. And I he destroys the part where he says that they are co-equal. They're not co-equal. My father is greater than I. Then also, they said that um, they are all omniscient, meaning that they know, they, they, they have all knowledge, which is not true. Matthew 24, verse 36, Christ said that of that day and hour, no one knows, not the no angel, one knows. not the son, me, only, only the father. The father. Only the father. So that shows that they are not, uh, uh, um, they are not all, uh, they are not omniscient, which now contradicts the Trinity. Now, when I said, when I preached in the Baptist church and I mentioned John 14, 28, the pastor said, oh, Christ is just being modest when he says that my father is greater than me. He didn't really mean it. This is actually, I can tell you the name of the pastor who said it to me. And then when I, I, I don't know <laughs> say it, and then when I, I told him about uh, Matthew 24, verse 36, where Christ described that. Look, I don't even know the date of the end. Uh, that means Christ is not uh, omniscient. Omni so, so, omniscient, yes. He said that Christ was just being modest, that while he was on earth, he was not omniscient, but as he has gone to heaven, God has told him. This is what he said. I said, okay, well, in that case, then read Revelations. Revelations. Right there, Revelations. Revelations, this is Yeshua talking from heaven, 1-1. One, one. And this is what he says, that the, the very first verse of Revelations, these are the revelations of Jesus Christ. I'm using King James English, uh, which God gave him. Which yeah. God gave him. Now, you have to understand that Christ himself never called himself God. Never said that I am God. Never. These are things that men give to him. You see, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The, Yeshua, or who they call Jesus, is the only way to God. There is absolutely no way to God. I'm going to annoy some people when I say this. There's no way to God other than Yeshua. No other way to God. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to be angry. You might be Muslim. <laughs> you might be Hindu. You know, there is no other way. The only way to God is Yeshua. 
Anyway, now, so... Okay, sorry. Let me quickly um, buttress some very quick points um, without taking you off your uh, point. In the other video, I also quickly drew attention to Acts chapter 7, verse 55, where Stephen, as he was dying, looked up to the resurrected Christ and saw him see, standing by God's right hand. Another scripture we need to quickly examine is Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. He went a little further and bowed his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. That's the uh, context in that. Your will, not mine, meaning the will of God is by far superior to any other will. And a, a quick final one, without taking you off course, because people are going to look for errors in our in our um, video. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. At about three o'clock, he cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? These all show uh, the fact that yes, Yeshua or Christ might be the uh, embodiment of the word of God, but the God, the mighty God himself, Theon, is still uh, superior to him, which he attested to when he said, my father is greater than I. Sorry to take off your, uh, you off your court, but people are, are going to miss out all these and then they're going to come and start commenting all sorts of things. I can't explain all of them in the comment section. Now, um, let's take this a little further. Praying to Jesus. That is another common error in today's church what is your advice regarding that yeshua, praying and worshiping yeshua never asked anybody to pray to him he never asked anybody to pray to him i'm praying to yeshua is i mean it's just a fallacy it's, it's i never i remember when i was a child they taught me this song in um, in the African church you know when I, somebody touched me somebody touched me somebody touched my soul when i was praying praying to my jesus now imagine imagine you are a child you are emotionally scripted to to sing that song and that, that is error yeshua never told anybody to pray to him and if you read scripture nobody ever prayed to yeshua Yeshua himself prayed to God. The Holy Spirit, yeah, the Holy Spirit itself even helps you to pray to God. This is scripture. Helps you to make groanings and intercessions to God. You see, Yeshua never, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I saw you reading from scripture, so maybe you have a scripture there. So I, I just want you to read 1 Corinthians 15, 27 to 28. Read 1 Corinthians 15, 27 to 28. All right, I'm reading from the New International Version, 27. For the scriptures say, God has put all things under his authority. Of course, when it says all things are under his authority, that does not include God himself, who gave Christ his authority. 28. Then when all things are under his authority, the son will put himself under God's authority so that God who gave his son authority over all things will be utterly supreme over everything everywhere. Can you read it in the King James Version? The reason why is because a lot of people swear by the King James Version. So they might say you are reading it in an Antichrist Version. So just read it in the King James Version. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, I'm sorry, Renu, you might disagree, but the King James is the Antichrist version to me. Yeah, but you know, um, we are actually we are actually not talking to ourselves. We are talking to people. I know, I know, I know. So let me let me get the King James version. It's one. I hardly use it, so it's is the the, the um, okay verse twenty seven. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he's accepted which did put all things under him. Verse 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also be subjected unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Now, that verse is very, very clear. It's, I mean, it's so clear. 
you know, that it just precludes any argument. It's so very, very clear that God who put all things under Christ is the only God and is above all. Now read 1 Corinthians 8, 6 again, please. Uh, the reason why I want you to do this is that I want people to see that I'm not giving my opinion. I want people to see that I am being led not just by, not by my emotion, but I'm being led by the word of God, scripture. So read 1 Corinthians 8, 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Uh, but for us, there is one God, the Father, by whom all things were created and for whom we live. And there is one Lord, um, Yahushua, oh, sorry, Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created and through whom we live. If you study Greek like you have, for instance, you know, the word for God is Theon, while the word for Lord is Creon. Okay, so if you can you read that also in the King James version because I don't want the I want people. No, it's important because no problem, no problem. I agree with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but there is but one God, the Father. But one, one God, one God. If you read this, sorry, I'm even going to take you to the original Greek uh, scriptures just to quickly embellish this. It says. It says, "Heis Theos." Hope pater, one God, the Father, one God, the Father. Let me go back to King James. I'm sorry, I just have to bring you back there. Not a problem, not a problem. So of whom we are all things and we in him. And one Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, or uh, Christ, by whom all things and we by him. Okay, can you now, also read one last scripture, please, for, for the benefit okay. of your audience. If you read First Timothy, read verse 2 and five. First Timothy chapter two and five. So first Timothy chapter, first two, Timothy verse chapter two and five. Yeah. Okay. Yes. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ. So you can see now, that this fits into what Yeshua himself said in John 14, six, I am the way. I am not the destination. I am the way. He says that I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father. You come through me. But you are not coming, to, I'm not the decision, you're coming through me to the Father. And the reason why you're coming through me is because you are in a fallen state. If you come directly to the Father, you will die because if you read Habakkuk 1.13, God's eyes are too pure to look on iniquity. That was why when Yeshua took up our sins and then he became iniquity, what did he say? That God's eyes refused to look at him. The him, yes. So, so this idea is not it's not it's not in scripture. It's not original from God. If you read First Timothy, if you read First uh, Timothy uh, four ten, please can, that, can you just quickly read that, please, please. First Timothy four. All right, First Timothy four and ten. Okay. To this end, we labor and strive. Because we have put all our hope in the living God, who is the savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Now, you see that our hope is in the living God. God. You see that. So you see, and then he had only told you, who is this God? He said, the father, corroborating what Christ himself said. So when we are aware of these things, when we are aware of these things, you know, and then we begin to say, okay, it's so, it's so important because, um, like I said, I'm an ordained uh, pastor and I went through training. Now, here's the challenge of going through training. When you go to a seminary, three things are likely to happen in a seminary. And don't take my word for it, you can Google it. A lot of people enter seminary believing in God and then they leave seminary not believing in God. It's so common. Something like maybe about between 25 to 30% of the people who go to seminary, they enter seminary, they enter believing in God, they leave not believing in God because of what happens there. That while they're there, your professors, your teachers and all of that, they are not teaching you doctrine. They are teaching you dogma. Now, there's a difference between doctrine and dogma. Doctrine is like what you're reading. You say, okay, uh, professor, but this is what scripture says. This is what scripture says. Scripture says, yeah, the pastor, well, you know, according to our church, according to our faith, according to our denomination, we actually believe it like this. That is now dogma. That is now dogma. So now you are now, so after four years, you see that, okay, but Christ said this, eh, but I know, but what we, what we believe is this. And so you begin to see that, that dogma is man trying to variate 
the doctrines of God. And Yeshua had a problem with the Pharisees. He said that in vain you worship me. That is he's quoting scripture, that the, what, what, what God was telling them. In vain you worship me. Teaching for doctrine. Mark chapter the seven, verse seven. Traditions man. of men, which is dogma, the traditions man. of men. Now, this tradition, Trinity, it started 325. It's a tradition of men. It's a doctrine of men. Why did Yeshua say it is finished? Everything, everything that you need for salvation is in this word of God. You do not need, you do not need. If you read, for instance, if you read, uh, um, um, but anyway, I'm sure you have some questions. I don't want to dominate this. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, real quick, uh, I just wanted to quickly support you um, with Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Get out of here, Satan. Yahushua told him, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Mm -hmm. This is another point. Christ and Satan are having a discussion and, cry, and Satan says to Christ, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world if you worship. Him. He says, get out of here. Mm -hmm. Worship God alone. Another clear distinction that many people are um, going to miss. Now, I want to take you to a prophecy in the book of Isaiah which is where much of today's error starts from. You see, what I was trying to explain to you earlier on is people don't understand how to use Proverbs. They don't understand how to use Psalms. They don't understand how to use uh, the prophecies of the book of Isaiah or Ezekiel. What they do is the same one line um, uh, doctrine. They just pick a line from Isaiah without understanding who it was referring to, what it was saying, where this happened and why, and just turn it, turn it into a modern doctrine superimposed into today's world. So I wanna open this for you. Isaiah chapter nine and verse six, let me read from the King James Bible like okay. you um said so that people for instance who are not our normal followers would be able to uh follow yes for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father and the prince of peace this is one of the biggest verses used to say Christ is the mighty God. What is your take on Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6? You see, like I've told you, I said the greatest um, challenge that we have in Christendom, and I, like, I remember about, I've told you that there's a difference between Christendom and Christianity. The greatest challenge that we have in Christendom is that um, the Bible, or rather scripture, has been translated it's been translated from the original language to um, other languages. And like, like I told you, in the process of a translation, in the process of conversion, value is lost. In the process of translation, in the process of conversion, value is lost. Now, I, this, this um, um, is something that I, I have to be very, very careful with because I, I, don't want to, um, I don't want people to misunderstand me. But what I'll tell people is that that verse which you read, Isaiah um, 9, Verse six. Try to read it in the Hebrew, and it's not. You don't have to go and start learning a biblical Hebrew and all of that. Is uh, what you can do. Is I have a copy of the Hebrew Bible. Okay, maybe you can read it in Hebrew. Yeah, and, and maybe. Uh, my Hebrew, Hebrew is not as good. It says. Um, it says El Gibor. Yeah, I'm reading. I have. The and, and I have the Hebrew as well, so I'm following you. Okay. Okay, it says El Gibor, El Gibor Abiyad Sar Salom. That is God, mighty, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prince is Sar in Hebrew, and Salom is peace. Uh, now, the word for God here is El. And I think that is where the problem emanated from. But since you are a better scholar in Hebrew than me, I'll leave this to you. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, start to explain that because if you do, what's gonna happen is that a lot of people who are watching might call um, me antichrist, you know, because um, of not, not understanding the Hebrew. What I'll just tell people who are watching this is that go and get this, um, Get that verse in Hebrew 
and then get an English um, um, Hebrew to English dictionary and then just read it yourself. And it will be clear to you. It's, it, is, it is not, when you read it in Hebrew, it's, it is clear, it's not, it's not obscure. I don't want to, I'm not going to explain that. I can explain that, you know, but um, here's the thing. When, if I explain that, and then, you know, a lot of people, I, do, I don't want to offend people, but sometimes a lot of people, um, maybe they're not too meticulous. They will not go and even check. They will not go and read it. Are you listening to me? They will not go and, Clearly. and then they will just only take what I say and then they can twist it. And then tomorrow, Sarah reporters, Linda Ikeji, um, the Renal Mokri is Antichrist. I don't want that. Just get, because when you read it in the Hebrew, it's very, it, you will understand it. When you read it in the Hebrew, you don't understand it. You know, so go, go, go if the I read scripture in Hebrew, but you don't read scripture in Hebrew like me. Just open that verse. You know, go on Google, put Hebrew, Hebrew text analysis, read it there, then get an English to a Hebrew dictionary and then um, um, uh, read it yourself. I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to do that, you know, uh, because like that is, um, that is a slippery slope, a slope, you know, somebody will just um, take a few things what I've said, because I've had that before, you know, when I try to explain the Trinity, uh, there was a Catholic Reverend Father who just um, just took one line of what I said out of context, took it there, and then started to write and embellish and build up, um, build up upon that. And like um, I'm having a debate with another Catholic, with a Reverend Catholic Father who's uh, coming to the U.S. for his PhD studies. And I mean, like if, if, if people have seen these things, and then they've seen that oh. No, but Reno was actually uh, correct. But they, they they don't want to because he's a Reverend Father. He do he would not want to um, impugn his fellow Reverend Father. You understand? So I have to be very very careful. You know, I mean, I'm not I am an ordained minister, and then also um, I have to think about the fates of people. So I've done in detail the uh, Trinity, I've given you, um, in the, uh, I mean, very, anybody who's watched this will see how I've explained this using scriptural uh, reference and then using historical reference. But for Isaiah chapter nine, verse six and seven, you just read it yourself in the Hebrew. It's gonna be clear enough. Okay, um, beautifully put. I've also been in that, uh, in those shoes before. Um, I remember when I was talking about the Latin uh, word Lucifer and how it made its way into the English Bible and then formed the whole doctrine through the era of King James. And one pastor just went to quote one little thing I said and expanded it into a three hour teaching. Yeah, yeah. You know, so <laughs> Reno, you have no idea. As in, he took one thing I said quoted me out of context and expanded it into three hours. I had to call the guy out. So I understand where um, you are I going to. I think we've I mean, been... I, I... Oh my gosh, you've frozen up. You've frozen up. Oh, I think it's frozen up. Order, uh, scenario. Uh, can I say something? Yes, please. I think the difference between you and I uh, on this issue is that people misquote me all the time. I don't respond. People lie about me all the time. I don't respond because like God has not called me to quarrel or to argue. It's just God has called me to teach. Now, if you read in the book of Ezekiel, you know, and it's also mentioned other times in scripture, but it says that when I have called you and I've told you to go and preach the truth to men and you refuse to preach the truth to men and they die maybe in the way that they are in error. Ignorance, I yes. I hold you responsible. However, when you have taught them and you have taught the truth and people refuse to listen, then you are free from that uh, um, guilt. obligation and that guilt. That guilt. I will now yeah. hold them. You know, so that's the only thing that I do. I mean, for I mean, I, I'll give you a very good example. I was talking to um, probably the most popular pastor in Lagos. I'm not going to mention his name. You know him, but I'm not going to mention his name. It's the, probably the most popular pastor in Lagos, very influential. And I was talking about this mother, the Trinity. You know, is a man with a very rich voice. But I'm not going to say more. So <laughs> you I'm don't need to. <laughs> while I was talking to the man, you know, I told you, you was trying to, I, 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 I was having a conversation with the Trinity to me, and I just said, but you know, this, you know, you have to because there are popular men of God in Nigeria who don't believe in the Trinity, but they are never going to say it publicly. They have admitted to me in private. 
I mean, these are really popular men, but probably more popular than this one that is, is most popular in Lagos. I don't want to mention their name. I don't want to call them out. So I was trying to explain, but I said, look, but you know that this thing is unscriptural. This thing is traditions of men. It was men that brought this up from the uh, Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. And then Matthew said, well, you know what? I, I actually believe. And then he went on and on. And I said, okay, but you know, if you read in Greek, you know what they're talking about is, it's not there. If you read in, in the original coin Greek, there was silence at the other end. So I said, sir, are you there? He says, well, yeah, yeah, yes, I did. So I, I, again, like, you know, like when you read it in Greek, he says, um, Reno, I don't read Greek. Oh, I said, oh, you don't read Greek. So I was taken aback because this is a man who preaches and a lot of people listening to, listen to him and he was trying to convince me of the Trinity. I said, okay, you don't read Greek. I said, okay, not a problem, not a problem. Now you see, like for instance now, when you went to Jerusalem, because you know, I went to Jerusalem myself too. And I, I mean, like, I, uh, not only did I, I did I go to uh, Greece itself, you know, I went to Greece, I went to Corinth to go and study these things. I also, when I went to Jerusalem in discussing with the rabbis, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that, um, uh, these things were so, because Christ has asked us to search the scriptures. So like, you know, when you went to Jerusalem, did you also have that experience? And then the same thing, quite at the other end, this is the most popular pastor in Lagos. Well, you say, I've never been to, to Israel. I've, I've never been to Israel. So, you, you've, you don't, you've not, you, 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 you've, you've never read, I was stammering because I was, I was surprised. You've not read scripture in Greek. You've not been to Jerusalem. He said, no, but listen, now let me tell you. But I know, I know I might not have been there, but you see, you have to understand there that, that like, you know, like, um, like when you look at it now, like I was with uh, um, Bishop Jakes and you know, Bishop Jakes and, and I, we have this view, you know, we have this view, it's a oneness. I, I mean, no, there, is, uh, there is no body on earth that is important enough to cite as an authority for doctrine. Nobody, no matter how popular they are, the only authority for doctrine that we have is scripture. So whether you, you use high palutine words, look, if you read John chapter 7, verse 48, John chapter 7, verse 48, the chief priest, you know, you have to understand that there is only one high priest in the Sanhedrin. So you have, you have a yes. high priest, then you have several chief priests, then you have yes. priests. So there's priests. a pyramid, there's a, the, the high priest, then you have several chief priests, then you have priests yes. on there. You know, then you yes. have other, um, other like sons of Aaron. So when they held their Sanhedrin council and then they asked the temple uh, uh, soldiers to go and arrest Yeshua, they went and they went to arrest Yeshua. And when they got there, they were just caught up over in overwhelming passion with the way he was speaking. And so they came back. And when they came back, you know, the chief priest asked them, why have you not brought him? And he said, hmm. never a man spoke like this man. Now read John chapter 7, verse 14. This is what they said. He said, has any of the rulers or the chief priests or the Pharisees believed in him? But these people who know not the law and believe in him are cursed. Are you seeing it there? It has always been the case that you know, religion, the organized religion, the establishment, they establishment they, that's they the word believe, but the ordinary people because you have to understand that the reason why they call scripture new testament old testament is because it is a testament it's a letter written to you by god it is not meant to be hard it is written in easy simple language for you to understand it you see uh, and maybe probably because i live in the west maybe you don't have it in uh, because like um i used to have a lot of cars but then uh, uh 2019 i started traveling the world so i gave out all my cars i gave one of my cars to my personal assistant i gave all my cars they were not just ordinary cars they are messages you know i gave out um how many messages did i give out i gave out about four cars you know not that i will sell completely i gave out the cars and then so I said, so when I go to a new country where I, 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 did, so I, I just use Uber, but if I eventually I found out that there were some countries that don't allow Uber. They don't allow Uber. I went to Bermuda. They don't allow Uber in Bermuda. I went to different countries. So I had to rent a car. Now, when you're renting a car, what they will do is like, uh, they will give you a, a big uh, paper and then you'll write some things very, very, very tiny, very, very tiny to trap you. They call it small print. They trap you. Yes. Now, all these traditions of men, all these things, they are the small print. So you just sign onto it and you say, I'm an Anglican, I'm a Catholic. Most people have never made a conscious decision to interrogate what does it mean to be a Catholic. And once you use the word Catholic, a lot of people become very, very defensive. 
they are no longer um, they are no longer um, thinking spiritually or thinking objectively. They become defensive. You want to attack Catholic Church? No, 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 no. So they start to think they, from not, a subjective point of view. Exactly. So most people have not made a conscious decision to say, okay, why am I a Catholic? Why am I an Anglican? Why am I Pentecostal? Why am I Methodist? Why am I Baptist? They are basically a function of their parents' decision. They were, I met somebody the other time, and then um, um, I told myself, well, I, I, I've always loved God. I've always, I, I've always um, um, well, believed in God. I always I, I used to, but I became a child of God. I became a believer at the age of 13 when I was in secondary school in Nigeria, and I was preaching. And they told me, no, I, I was born a Christian. I told them, no, you see. You can't a, be born. It's <laughs> an error. You cannot be born in a Christian. You cannot be born a Christian. You have to make That's a, why I don't believe in child baptism. Exactly. You cannot, you cannot be born a Christian. You, can have, you, you have to have a conscious, uh, um, you have to make a conscious uh, a decision. So these people, they've gone on to, it's just like, now what I'm going to say is going to annoy a lot of Muslims in Northern Nigeria. I have... Muslim followers, and they tell me that even though they are not Christian, they just love listening to me. Really. But you see, you people in the South, you have forgotten your culture. And I told them, I said, listen to this. You are making a big error. You are looking at Southern Pentecostal Christianity, and they are using it to judge As Christianity. You, it's, you are, mm. First of all, you cannot, you cannot use it to judge me. I don't believe that, uh, that Jesus, who you call Jesus, Isa, but he's been in Yeshua. I don't believe he's God. I believe he is the son of God and the only way to God. I don't believe that. And even your Quran, which I've read from cover to cover, actually agrees with me, calls him uh, a Masi, Masihu, a Masihu, which is Messiah. They talk, okay, yeah, but they, they, well, they now to be said that, ah, that, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing. He's a Muslim, he believes in Islam. I said, okay, when did you make a conscious effort to believe in, in Islam? And then the guy said to Stammer, he said that he was born into Islam. I said, no, you were not born into Islam. That is what they've told you. Your parents, there was a time in Northern Nigeria when most of you were not even Muslims. You were conquered by the Fulanis in 1804. Before then, Islam was mainly concentrated in the concept of Nigeria in a place called Kanembornu. Kanembornu, mostly the most, the most of Kanembornu is now in, in um, Kanuri Empire, um, be, more, uh, Bornu, Bornu State, Meduguri, but there's a part of Kanembu in Chad, present day Chad. Now I said, most of you, you, were, you, you had your own history, your own culture. You were conquered by the Fulanis in 1804, the Uthman Danfudio Jihad. And then, it, it, so what happens is that you were forcefully Islamized. It was not a choice. You were forcefully Islamized. Although there were Muslims before then, but in the, the vast sort of people were forcefully The Islamized. spread of Islam. Now, your, those your fathers there, they did not accept Islam by choice. They were conquered. You accept it or you die. That's the truth. It doesn't sound nice, but it's the truth. And then when they, they said there was no choice, they accepted it. Now, there are children that were born had no knowledge of anything else other than Islam. Now, their children's children had no knowledge of anything else other than Islam. They, and you will see that people with a conqueror mentality, they will tell you, it takes three generations for people to completely forget all about their, uh, their identity and then take up the identity of the person trying to colonize you. And that's what mm. is happened in, wow. in uh, northern Nigeria. So we force your fathers to be uh, Muslims. They give birth to children, then they die. Those children give birth to children, then they die. Those children give birth to children, then the third generation mm. has nothing else. So now, people in Nigeria, particularly southern Christians, they like to call uh, Boko Haram. Say Boko Haram, they are terrorists. They are, they are they not terrorists. They are terrorists. Look, what Boko Haram is doing in northern Nigeria. The Catholic Church and the Anglican Church did it all around they the world. They all did it. They did it all around the world. In Latin America, they were forcefully Catholicized by, by force or conquistadors kill you. They were forcefully, and then, then. Let's not even talk of the Crusades. For, if, let, let's leave the Crusades, because the Crusades <laughs> were war, well, was war. I said in Latin America, they went to other people's land, they forcefully. They did not call it terrorism. They are calling Boko Haram now terrorism because they are in control of the world, the white and the Saxon protesters. What they did was worse than what Boko Haram is doing. Go Absolutely. to Australia. Look at what the Anglican Church did to the Aboriginal, Aboriginals, the native. In the, Canada, even. 
ah, in, in Canada, look, the one in Canada, they killed Native Americans. But children. in Canada, it, it was more of, no, it was not, it, it was more of the Catholic Church. It was yes. more of the Catholic Church. Than but it was the same thing. I'm just watching yes. what you're saying. Because yes. look at now, that is why churches are being burnt in Canada in rebellion to uh, what they found out about the history of this church. That is why I tell people that, look, uh, it's very easy for us to point to the Fulanis now and point to this person and say, even the church was built on these pillars, forceful indoctrination. Um, I, I like to refer people to some Netflix movies, um, like uh, Vikings, like the last kingdom, you will get a perception of what Europe used to be like um, uh, before it was Anglis uh, Anglicized, if I can say that, and before the Anglo-Saxons had a hold uh, on Europe. It was, it was literally war and they would come uh, in the name of God and do all sorts. So, I understand where you're coming from. No, and, to, 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 uh, complete I this, that. To, to complete this, yes. to complete this, I went um, with my assistant. I went with my assistant to because I, I don't like to travel alone. So um, I always travel. I know you've invited me once, and one day I'm sure one of his. No, I'll pay. For, I'll pay for everything. Everything that your ticket, your accommodation, everything. But I don't travel alone. I like to travel um, um, uh, with people. So I went to um, I went to Laodicea um, and um, La La Cappadocia. That's a modern. We were supposed to go together. Yeah, no, 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 no. This, this, I, I didn't, I, I didn't even know you then. This was 2017. Oh, okay, okay. Because okay. I know you went for another trip there. Yeah, no, I go to. It's not. Turkey is such a large country, so it's not possible to go. Um, all of the, you have to go several times. You know. So yes. I went to. I went to. Um, I went to Ephesus. I went to Laodicea. I went to Pamukkale. I went to Cappadocia, and then so uh, then I went to um, uh, Selçuk. Now you have to understand that Turkey used to be all Christian. It used to be all yeah. Christian. But like I told you until it fell to the Sultan. Yeah, no, no, even before then. That's not even before then. You know, there was this controversy between um Constantine and then Arius of the Eastern Church, of which they yes. have the the, uh, the uh, they call it the Arian, um, the Arian heresy. heresy. Now, what happened yes. then was that in in uh, Rome and then later it spread to the Roman uh, uh, world all over Europe. Was that if you did not believe according to the um, the doc, the uh, dogmas that came out of the Council of Nicaea, they were killing you. So they were killing all these people, and then when they want to kill you, they're not going to just kill. They will kill. You, say we are killing you in the name of God. So there yes. used to be a lot of people in present-day Turkey who actually believed. Um, in the same doctrines that Christ taught, and they did not deviate from it. They, they did not change all in, they did not accept Trinity and all of that, but they were killed one by one, one by one. But there are still about 20,000 of them in Turkey. 20,000 mm. of them. They were killed. These are people who used to, who used to uh, they were all over the country. They're killed until now. There's 20,000 of them. If you go on YouTube, you will see where I preached to them. So these are mm. people that they hold true to the original faith of Christ that Christ taught when he was on earth. They don't believe in all this trinity and they're praying to uh, uh, um, uh, Yeshua and all of that. But here's the thing, that at that time, you know, they had something called the Holy Inquisition. And you can just research it if your viewers are listening. Oh, yeah. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Go and research it. Where, for instance now, they will catch you and say, do you believe in a trinity? If you say no, they, you'll be tied, you, they'll put a fire, you'll be burned in that fire, or they might put you on the stake, or they might put you on, so that was how they, they wiped out away the or pure Orthodox Christianity from Europe. I mean, they, they were killing people, they were doing a lot of things, it was a horrible thing. So when I see people now come to say Boko Haram, what Boko Haram are doing? These people, they did, 10 times worse. 10 times worse. 10 times worse. So thank you so much, Reno. It's been wonderful hanging out with you. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we're going to try to make this as regular as possible. Uh, I know Reno is quite busy and so am I, but we'll try to make this monthly uh, one doctrine after the other. Um, I'm glad both of us share the view that Christ is not God, but he is indeed the only begotten son of God, the way to God. And the way is not meant to be worshipped. The way is not meant to be praised 
uh, prayed to, it is meant to be utilized. You use a road. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway is useless if you stand at the uh, Lagos end and pray. Until you get on the road and start walking, driving, riding or car, getting on a bus, you are not utilizing the road. So how do you utilize Christ? By obeying him, by listening to him, by, by allowing the Holy Spirit to come into you. That way you can proceed all the way down to God. Thank you so much, Reno Mokri. I hope this serves to build your faith, not destroy your faith. Um, many Christian uh, debates tend to make people feel that, okay, since the Trinity doesn't exist, and since uh, Christ is not God, why am I even wasting my time? No. You are supposed to strengthen yourself with the truth. Remember, if you read John chapter 16, verse 13, uh, the Holy Spirit is described as uh, numaton aletheia, the spirit of truth that will lead you to all truth. So part of evidence of the Holy Spirit in you is truth will be revealed to you. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you would see the truth, the scriptural truth. We are not quoting uh, Ayelala. We are not quoting Ifa. We are quoting the same scriptures, showing you properly how doctrine should be established. And Reno just pointed out the difference between doctrine and dogma. Are you a dogmatic Christian? Or are you a scriptural Christian? You make that choice after you watch that this video. Watch the part one, watch the part two, pray about it, study all the scriptures, and then make the decision. God bless you. Thank you, Reno. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. And um, I'm going to go back to sleep because I'm, I'm from California and uh, I woke up very early to do this because of my um, um, love for the body of Christ. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And the body of Christ will appreciate this while you're with us and even after you pass on. This is going to be uh, the junction we get to when the body of Christ takes a turn headed for the truth. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you.